Now, the Australian Republican movement uh, is, and I think this is rather odd timing, launching a fresh push for uh, Australia to become a referendum. Now, this is coming off the back, of course, of Frederick and Mary's ascension to the Danish throne. We all watched that yesterday. But I would have thought the level of coverage of Fred and Mary, I mean, it was page after page after page in all the Australian newspapers, stepping up to the Danish throne, was more of a, a blow for the Republican movement. I noticed today the newly minted Australian in coins, by the way, with King Charles on the head side of that coin is sold out. Now, this debate comes up every few months and particularly in the lead up to Australia Day, but I haven't noticed any shift in the public mood. Isaac Jeffrey, the Australian Republic Movement CEO, has been kind enough to join us. Odd timing, don't you think? G'day, Steve. No, not at all, mate. I think it's, uh, it's really good timing, actually. We've got Obviously, one of our own just being crowned uh, over overseas there in Mary, um, who who is an amazing representative of her people over there, um, and is doing a great job by all accounts. And that's exactly what my press release was saying yesterday. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had somebody like her uh, here representing us at home? Uh, we've also got our king and queen, Charles and Camilla, coming to visit later on in the year. So I think it's perfect time to be having a conversation. Doesn't mean we're going to have a referendum tomorrow. Doesn't mean we'll probably even have one next year but in a couple of years time i think the australian people are ready i'm looking at polling that suggests that you know 52 percent of the country according to the daily telegraph uh, are, are supportive of a republic uh, so now i think is exactly the time to have the conversation i think you're a very optimistic person and i commend you for that and i commend you for your passion for your cause but i mean the republican movement doesn't want Australia to have a, a king or a queen. So why would you choose the ascension to the throne of an Australian commoner becoming a queen as a reason to re-prosecute your case? That seems rather odd to me. Yeah, that's exactly right. We don't want a we don't want a king or a queen, but we want an Aussie. And she's an Aussie. We want somebody the young girl from Tasmania. We want somebody who's just off the plane from overseas who's now calling Australia home. We want uh, an Aussie to be in charge. We want them to be elected by the people to represent the people. And that's exactly why we thought it was a great opportunity because we've got somebody in Mary who is doing a wonderful job, represents her people and is this great figurehead for her nation along with her husband, obviously. That's what we could have here. Um, but we just think that you should be elected uh, rather than born into it or marrying into it and inheriting that power and that wealth. Surely, though, uh, Isaac, when you saw the result of the, uh, the referendum into the voice and how uh, the elites in this country got that so completely wrong, 60% of Australians either didn't understand it or didn't want to have anything to do with it, uh, surely that has put the Republican movement back a, a long way because this current Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, the last thing he is ever going to do in any of his times as Prime Minister is have another referendum. Look, not at all. I think that now is exactly the time for us to have the conversation. As I said, it's going to be a couple of uh, a couple of years away. The voice and the ref and the republic are completely different issues. They they've got completely different supporter bases. Um, I have uh, personal colleagues, friends, um, people on our own national committee within ARM who voted, as you said, voted no. Um, ARM's not linked to the Yes campaign for The Voice at all. They're completely separate things. And our members and supporters have told us as much. Um, we had quite a significant amount of people within our ranks who voted yes, but we also had quite a significant amount that voted no. They're completely different issues and they should be, like all referendums, taken case by case to the Australian people. And that's exactly what we're asking for because they are different things. They are different issues. As I said, the Daily Telegraph has it at 52%. Our internal support, our internal polling, I should say, shows support for the monarchy is only actually at 8%, which means that there's a huge chunk of this country that are open to the idea of a republic if we get the right, um, uh, the right model, the right timing and things in place. And that's what we're all about. We're going to be going around the country this year, talking to the Australian people to help finalise that model, the people's model, to then put that to the parliament, to then put that to the people in a few years' time. One thing I will agree with you on, I mean, I'm not sure it's great timing for uh, the, the monarchists in Australia to have Charles and Camilla visit. I mean, it would be a very different thing if it was <laughs> William and Kate, who would appear to me to be as popular as, as Frederick and Mary. But I'm not sure 
King Charles and Camilla coming to the country is going to uh, do the monarchy cause any good at all. I think it might actually play into your hands, mightn't it? Well, we'll wait and see, I guess. But we're certainly, uh, certainly welcome the king and queen to the country with uh, with open arms. We've extended an invitation uh, to meet with the king and queen while they're here to talk about what an Australian republic looks like and to talk about what a model would look like, to talk about how we'd still probably be part of the Commonwealth. A lot of people are telling us they want to stay as part of the Commonwealth. There are 41 out of the 56 nations in the Commonwealth who are already republics. We could join those ranks. So we want to have a conversation about that. We also want to say, you know, this is no slight to you, uh, Charles. It's no slight to Camilla or any of your, your kids or your family. It's not about that. Our relationship with the British people will always be strong. Our defence relationships will always be strong. This is just about one of us being able to um, take on that, that high office to represent our country abroad and to be on an equal footing as the UK and other countries are around the world with their own heads of state. That's what this is about. It's not about Charles and Camilla. Uh, it's about giving the people a say in who represents them.